if I just threw out there that Tennessee could have two nagging injuries to two of its offensive linemen or a fairly significant injury, not a season ending injury, a two or three game type of injury to Nico, which do you think most people would immediately jump on? It's the two or three game games missed by Nico, right? Wouldn't you think that would be it? That you would rather not have happen? Nico yes. missed two games? Yes. Yeah, I think you'd rather Nico not miss two games. Okay. Well, let's go to this guy right here who's uh, nice enough to join us. Cole Kubelik of uh, went everywhere. He's all over the World Wide Web now. He's at WJOX in the morning, so he's nice enough to uh, join us afterwards. And he did a fantastic video on Tennessee. Cole, tell me about how people can access your own personal stuff because uh, I've I've said it for a long time. You're as good of a uh, a guy that can break down football as anybody that I've I've been around or seen. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, podcast is Apple Podcast, Spotify, or you can go to YouTube and get it. Just search Cube Show. Uh, C-U-B-E show, and uh, we do a weekly show. During the season, we break down film of all the SEC games. Um, in the off season, we try to change it up a little bit. We're doing some spring reviews for every team, and Tennessee was this past week. So um, I feel pretty good about the team, and it's kind of what we talked about in the video. So I think there's a lot of reason for optimism. Yeah, and, and to clarify, you're going off a lot of uh, spring practice, or at least some spring practice video you see, correct? Some of the spring games, some of things I've seen, some of things that I, some people that I've talked to, information that I've been able to gather. So um, I, I try to talk to folks that I know that know the team that are around it, that are close to it. And then I'm able to able to see certain things with certain teams. Then obviously, I always think you can get a little bit more from spring games than people think. You always hear people say, oh, it's a spring game. You can't get anything. You can't learn anything. I just I really disagree with that. I don't think that you can learn a lot about the team collectively when you watch a spring game, but I don't really have a lot of question marks about a lot of teams collectively. I need to know about certain position groups, certain individuals, how they're going to fit in as either a role player or as a starter or where they're going to play or what they're going to be able to do. Um, Like I'll give you an example, like Blake Shapin, quarterback at Mississippi State. There wasn't a ton that you could take away from collectively because you say, oh, it's a spring game. They're only running certain coverages or they're not pressuring. But I wanted to see him operate the offense. I wanted to see how he got the ball in and out of the mesh. I wanted to see the timing of when he got rid of the football, his comfort level in the pocket, if he decided to throw the ball away. And I thought there was a big difference when you saw his backup, Chris Roberts, come in. And all of a sudden he's running around scrambling, trying to get away and he just didn't look near as comfortable. So th- I, th- I think there are certain things like that that you can learn from certain teams. I don't want to stereotype you, but you played offensive line uh, for Auburn, for those that don't know, maybe a little bit younger than us. And you addressed the offensive line from the get. And you think they're pretty good, right? But definitely not deep. Have a chance to be one of the better groups in the SEC. Um, obviously, John Campbell is one of the better tackles. In all college football coming back, he, he has a chance to be the best tackle in the SEC next year. He'll most likely flip over to the right side. Um, Lance Hurd, we've seen him at LSU, not a ton, but we've seen a little bit of him. I, I think fundamentally he's got a ways to go, but he's got all the ability in the world in, in a monster frame that could be a guy that from a power perspective adds a little bit more. Maybe can give you you know, what you had there at tackle a couple of years ago with a top 10 pick. Uh if Mays is healthy at center, he, he's one of the better centers in the SEC. I think he's a must-have, though, kind of like John Campbell and, and maybe Lance Hurd. Um, and Javante Spragans has played a ton of football. Now, he needs to cut down on the penalties a little bit, but I love his attitude. I love his demeanor. I love the way he plays the game. I think you've got some options at the opposite guard. Maybe a, a Dane Davis could slide down. Maybe Andre Carrick could, could end up being that guy. But you've got four solidified guys that I think I know where they're going to be and how they're going to operate. And it gives me a lot of confidence in that group. And I do think there's a little more depth. It's just not a lot of depth in the right places. Uh, I think tackle, probably a little bit of a concern. And center, definitely a concern of if you were to lose one of those guys, depending on which one, especially a tackle, it could hurt. Yep, so, Cole, Cole it's, you, you brought up Spragans. And, uh, you know, we spoke last year at SEC Media Days. And I, I think one of the underrated parts of Tennessee's offense in 2022 was that blocking duo of Cooper Mays and Javante Spragans, which really sparked the run game, which is why Josh Heupel's offense was able to create so many of those big passing plays. 
Jontez Spragans got hurt last year. How big of a deal is that the most underrated part of Tennessee's offense, that Cooper Mays, Javante Spragans duo on the right side? No, I would say probably just having Mays because he directs all the traffic. He understands mentally how to handle everything. And physically, he's a gifted football player. And so to be able to handle the snaps in an offense like that, be able to make the – got to make the calls quick in that offense. You don't have a lot of time just sitting there able to survey things and get people lined up and orchestrate everything. He can manage that very well. So he's probably as, value of a, as valuable of a piece to the offense as anybody other than Nico just because of how much is on him every snap, every series. Uh, you know, I, I think that year, you know, Darnell Wright was a pretty big piece of why they were able to move people around and do some different things. The offense is going to have advantages running the football just because of what they do to your numbers game. They're going to have those receiver splits out wide. They're going to challenge you out wide, and you have to make decisions. I've talked to coordinators in this league about that. They have to decide, am I going to keep more numbers out on the perimeter to help in coverage and to help tackle in space, or do I need more guys near the tackle box to be able to assist against the run game? It's, it's not an easy decision to make for a lot of defenses because of where you're more talented or where you have more experienced players. And, you know, the key to it all is that tight end position also. That's that's probably the part of it that nobody talks about, that when it's going and they get that insert blocker or they get a guy on the outside that can help double teams with offensive tackles, or they can run split zone and bring him flat across the line of scrimmage. And I think they've got a good group of tight ends there, one young one that I know they're really excited about. When that group's going, that's when things can really kind of excel to the next level, specifically in the run game. I assume you're talking about Ethan Davis. Um, a, a Correct. Yeah, a, a guy who played basketball who I know they really, really like and and his potential and his athleticism. Uh, I will get attacked by the uh, keyboard uh, commandos if I don't ask you what you th think about Nico. <laughs> I think he has all the ability to be a big-time quarterback in the SEC. I, from what I've seen, and it's been a very limited amount, I like his demeanor. Um, I, I do think that the leadership and being a little bit more vocal is something that there was an emphasis on in spring. Not that that's something that has to go a long way, but you want your quarterback to be able to sort of command the offense that way. He can make all the throws. He's got, he's got a great arm. I think he's got a good touch and feel, which a lot of younger quarterbacks just don't have, especially quarterbacks that have a big arm. I mean, that's – Tennessee fans were pretty familiar with that part of a game maybe not being where it needs to be last year. I like the mobility that he can add with his legs. I don't know if you want to live there because you don't want to put him in harm's way as much. I mean, think about what Hendon Hooker did. I mean, he was able to break people down with his legs, but you don't want him to have to exit and bring in your backup. I think it's a significant drop-off when he's out, and that's what kind of concerns me about this team. It's not just, not just Nico. And that's almost every team. If you lose a quarterback, it's going to be a massive drop-off to whoever's next, but I think center, tailback, maybe tackle. Those are positions that I just don't think this team can afford to lose this year. If they stay healthy at those spots, I think they're going to have a real chance to be one of the better offenses in the league. I think Nico could be special. I mean, it's just you got to get reps. You have to have experience. And it's hard to really say exactly what you think a guy can be until you see more of it. But he's got a big-time group of receivers. I love the Chris Brassel kid from Tulane. I think he's going to be a monster. Uh, it sounds like some of the fairy tales of Dante Thornton are a little bit more real right now than they were at any point last year because he wasn't healthy. He got a good tight end room, as we've mentioned. Um, I do think after Dylan Sampson, I'm not sure that you're going to be as close to the same, but possibly. We just wait and see. But he's got everything around him to go be a big-time SEC quarterback, and I think he has the talent as well to be able to pull that off. Hey, Caleb, I want you to jump in here, but uh, Cole, if you can, tell us again about all that you're doing and how people can uh, access your work, because I love it. The, the X's and O stuff is great. Well, I appreciate it. McElroy and Kubrick in the morning is 7 to 10 a.m. weekdays, uh, jocksfm.com, or you can get the Jocks app, uh, search WJOX. And then Cube Show podcast, we just did Tennessee. Uh, YouTube, at Cube Show on all your social media. Search Cube Show on iTunes. I think we're I think we're losing Cole. I think he's going in a bad cell. I think we I got the good of, stuff though, Caleb. Do you want to try to bring him back? I think and we're so, losing his uh, cell altogether. Yeah, I think we're losing him. <laughs> Cole, we're having trouble. You still with us? Sorry, yeah, about that. we got him back. 
Yeah. That's fine. We, we we got everything you said. Just give me your thoughts on on Tennessee defensively, and we'll let, let you run out of here. One of the better D lines in the league. They should be. I mean, Tennessee's probably in better shape as far as defensive tackle depth than any other team in the SEC, and that's I mean that's saying something because we saw what it was like in the portal with different teams, not just in the SEC but nationally chasing defensive tackles. I think they're going to be solid there. Got to stay healthy at linebacker. I think they need Keenan Peely to be healthy. Uh, but I think if he is healthy, that has a chance with him and Aaron Carr to be a pretty good group. I have some questions and concerns about the secondary. I, I don't think they're going to be as young as last year. But if you've got the best pass rusher in the league coming off the edge, which Tennessee may have, that's going to take a mighty load off of whoever's playing corner safety nickel. And so Tennessee should have that with, I, I think, what right now you probably say the best pass rusher in the Southeastern Conference coming off the edge. Agreed. Hey, can I ask you yeah. just a, a random question? Have you heard anything about Bison Lang? And then, Caleb, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, not a ton. I don't. I don't have a lot on him, to be honest with you. Yep, that works. The backup so, center behind Cooper. Go ahead, Caleb. So, Cole, I want to ask you a little bit on just on the SEC as a whole because, as you know, I think the most low-key underrated hire in college football this year was Jeff Levy to Mississippi State, who was Josh Heupel's offensive coordinator at UCF in 2018. How much more common do you think the Josh Heupel offense is about to get with the wide splits, realizing that teams have to commit if they do that? Yeah, I think, well, it's. I think it's the tempo that you have to almost overcommit to because what people don't understand is it, it's not just saying, okay, we're going to snap the ball fast on this next play. Uh, how you line up, where you line up, how to go to where the football is going to be spotted, who, to, what official to give the football to, like, those are – those are fundamentals of that pace and that tempo that are not easily learned. They spend a lot of practice time on it. They spend a lot of time initially when you get in installing it on just how to operate it. And then when new guys come in, they have to spend a lot of extra time on how to do it. And that's why that that's why Maze at center, I think is such a big piece for this Tennessee team if they're going to be successful. So that's the part that I think takes almost more dedication, but you're going to see bits and pieces of it everywhere. Like Lane uses pieces of it, but he doesn't necessarily run that offense. Um, you know, being around Kendall Browse at FAU and, and, and some of the stuff that they put in, you mentioned Levy with him at Ole Miss also. I think you'll probably see more people utilizing certain aspects of it than they will just dedicating themselves to running that offense that way. Cole, I, got, I know you got stuff to get to, man. We appreciate you working us uh, in. People need to check you out again on YouTube. So thank you so much, sir. Football season's almost here. Have a blessed day. I appreciate you guys having me and uh, looking forward to it. I, I will say I need a little break before, but it's going to be fun when it gets here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm disappearing <laughs> for about 10 days here before long. Go, <laughs> but <laughs> be blessed, sir. All right. Thanks, guys.